And as we start off on that front, football's first lady, Caroline Wilson. Craig. Good evening. The 300 game of Kane Corns is here, the volcano, and the five time, yes, the five time All Australian in Matthew Lloyd. We start, Caroline, with the spectre of Alistair Clarkson, which looms over a couple of clubs tonight, including the likes of St Kilda and Essendon. And the favourite sons in recent weeks, our own Matthew Lloyd among them, have asked some questions about Clarkson and his potential availability in the market. If you're St Kilda, are you even contacting Alistair Clarkson? Would you? Would you Would you make the call? You'd make the call. Why? Well, to gauge interest, for a start. I, I, I think you'd, you'd be derelict in your duty if you didn't make the call. I want a review for everyone to look at what's going wrong at the club and why it's been so mediocre for so long. And there is a man called Alistair Clarkson sitting there looking for a job. Mm. And could he be the, the thing that wakes up this football club from its slumber Awaking it from its slumber. I thought that was really intriguing and a really interesting comment coming from you. Before I move to Essendon and what I believe has happened in recent weeks with Alistair Clarkson, let's just have a listen to St Kilda's CEO-elect Simon Lethleen on Alistair Clarkson, or sort of. When you go through a process of looking to re-sign or consider your current coach, that part of that process is to do your due diligence across the market that's available for... The coaching, we've, we've certainly done that. So you made an inquiry about Alistair Clarkson? No, I didn't say that. I said that we, you certainly look at the market and you assess who's available. You'd be unsurprised to know that we did that for everyone that's available. We've been consistent, I think, in saying that for where we're at now with our program and our list, that we think that's as our man. What I would say is we aren't as reactive internally, perhaps, as the external football world is. Now, we know that GWS is still very much an option for Alistair Clarkson, and I'm not writing off a potential 19th team in Tasmania in 2025 if it comes around, and if it comes around at all, and that quickly. But I believe, Matthew, that there are two clubs in Melbourne, and we've named them, in St Kilda and Essendon, who have pretty much committed to their coaches. In fact, St Kilda are well down the track of a contract renewal, although they're not going to announce anything, I don't reckon, if St Kilda keep losing in the coming weeks. Which of those clubs is prepared to commit what would be an act of bastardry, a football bastardry, in dropping off the coaches to their, who they're verbally certainly committed to for 2023? Because both of them, in a way, are in a bit of a slumber. And I thought your comments about Essendon were fascinating. Yeah, as I've thought about it, like yesterday I made the bat Ben Rutten, and, and I think personally, I think Essendon and, and maybe less of St Kilda, because they're in a better position than Essendon are at the moment, but owe it to their members for this external review, not the review that um, they've spoken about where it was sort of a half, half-hearted half comment from Paul Brasher where he, he sort of you know, mentioned people that were OK, some that are not. We're just going to make some add-ons. We're not really going to uh, make you know, rash decisions. But I, I think they've got to look at the CEO, Xavier Campbell, I think in, in a total review about what the club thinks about what he's doing both on the field his decisions off-field versus on-field uh, in terms of the football club. I think the coach and the whole coaching staff, how are they tracking this, would come through an external review. I think they have to look at the development of the players, uh, the recruiting, uh, fitness staff, administration and the leadership of the senior players. I think that's what is needed at this football club. That, that's a clean-out. I'm saying review. Review. Yep. I'm Do you not think saying... all those roles are in jeopardy? No, I'm not saying... I think they all need to be looked at, yes, Hutch. Um, and what will come out of it, it might well be that, OK, he actually hasn't been given the best chance as the senior coach to, to thrive. And it doesn't matter who we bring in with the same structure, the next coach might not thrive after. So that's why I want the full review from an outside eyes to see where this club can Matthew, go. Matthew, the CEO's it's... on big money yeah. and he's been re-signed now for another two yes. years. Mm. And I reckon it wouldn't be beyond the realms of what I believe has happened in recent weeks that he might not have approached the Clark, Alistair Clarkson just to see whether he might think about... They, they will have inquired about Alistair. That's their job, to do it. There, will, there would have been an approach there. So are you less certain on Clarkson now as you've thought about it? Because no, 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 I'll, I'll if he's available, do you think take him yeah. as coach? Uh, would I? T I want it to be considered. Yes, yeah. I, I want what's best for the football club, uh, and I think that uh, yeah, if it means. But what I'm saying is, it shouldn't just be about the coach. And reflection in the last 24 hours. It's about your whole football club. I remember Tim Watson once made a comment: "The fish rots at the head." It's about being your whole football club being sound and strong. Not so just about the, the senior coach. Yeah. So you put the CEO on the agenda. Do you think he's time? Is no, that... I'm saying all of it. Every single one of them needs to be reviewed at home. And, and then, of course, there's the Jake Stringer issues mm -hmm. and reports that um, Jake Stringer and his camp were not happy 
being singled out by the coach a couple of weeks ago, Matthew. Personally, I absolutely understood what Ben Rutten was doing. Are we going to have a listen now to what Ben Rutten had to say? Yeah, he had a poor, poor game tonight, and we, you know, as a senior player for us, you know, we need more from him, and um, yeah. Yeah, Jake's okay, yeah. I mean, Jake's, um, oh, we've got a good relationship with him. Um, it's about getting him back to his best footy, which we know he can play. So there's no regrets about the way you, you sort of handled that, like you'd do it again if asked the question in a press conference? Yeah. Do you sit down, did you actually have a chat to him during the week? Did you actually sit down yeah. and look through it? Yeah, what, what came about? Well, that's for me, Jake, to, to work through. I actually don't mind that from Ben Rutten, Matthew. I think, I think it's, it's really surprising that anyone involved in ha the handling of Jake Stringer would not think he deserved a bit of a bake. You wouldn't, you wouldn't hear many... You wouldn't hear Hardwick or Clarkson or one of the Scots do that, though. It's, it's an experience. Yeah, I suppose you've got to know your players. It reaped benefits um, against St Kilda. Yeah, well, and they were didn't on the weekend. No, he was poor yeah. on the weekend. So I'm with you, though, in this sense, Cara. I'd say harden up. Toughen up. Um, you know, I've gone this way um, because I feel you, you need to hear it. Um, you know, and, and let's see what you're made of. And if he wants to drag his bottom lip, well, then Ben's maybe got to make an even tougher decision on, on Jake. But, 